Welcome to the Cristo Rey Network College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but will be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Christo Ray. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presenter, Arcadia University. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Kevin McGann. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Arcadia University. Arcadia is a small private liberal arts college located 15 miles from Center City, Philadelphia, so just far enough out and in the suburbs to be outside of the city on um, a quiet kind of suburban community with access to everything the greater Philadelphia region has to offer. Um, getting started, some, we have, being a smaller school at Arcadia, we only do have 1,800 undergraduate students, total of about 3,000 students, including all of our graduate programs. But our students are studying across 65 different fields of study. Some of our most popular programs include our biology major, um, our School of Global Business programs, math and computer science, and psychology, as well as our art and design BFA program. At Arcadia, we really focus on faculty and student relationships, and our average first year class size for four years straight now has only been 14. We really want you to have access to the faculty as you make the transition to college life with us at Arcadia, being able to start talking to them and feeling comfortable approaching them if you have questions about about a lecture or struggling with a paper topic and things like that um, as you make the adjustment to college life. Beyond the classroom, we our professors are really available to all of our students as well as whole life advising resources through our division of student success and extensive support services that are available to all students um, as you move through your four years and in, in your Arcadia career with us. Everything is really designed to make sure our students are successful and have all of the resources and know where to go to, um, to for the resources to be successful during their time as an Arcadia night. On campus, so our students are guaranteed housing um, for all four years as an Arcadia undergraduate. About 80%, a little over 80% of our students do live on campus, and all our first and second year students are required to live in our residence halls on campus, which include traditional first year halls, and then our upperclassmen who are primarily living in apartment style housing on campus, so much more independent style living, um, but with access to all of the campus resources. Um, to make sure you're going to be successful with us through your four years. Outside of the classroom, our students are extremely active at Arcadia. We currently have more than 60 active student organizations that range from cultural groups to academic groups to some unique Arcadia things like the Society for Castle Restoration, um, which works with our um, facilities staff for programming in the Great Towers Castle, which is on campus and actually serves mostly as offices, but in, is also a residence hall for a small group of first year students. Student life is really driven by the students on campus at any point, so it's really easy to get involved and make an impact on what your four years as an Arcadia student can look like. In addition to the clubs and activities that are available, our students are extremely active through our intercollegiate athletics program. Um, we are a division three institution. We sponsor 26 intercollegiate varsity programs, um, including our most recent editions of men's and women's ice hockey that started competition last year, and then eSports, which joined the Arcadia Slate in 2015. 16 or 2019. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get involved. We also have a lot of intramural sports teams that are available. Just also realized I forgot to share my screen, everybody. So my apologies. Um, sorry about that. So you can see some of the athletics that are available here at Arcadia um, on here. And there are a lot, number of clubs up teams and intramural teams as well. 
Outside of the campus life and on our campus in Glenside and in the Philadelphia area, one of the things we're most well known for at Arcadia is our international programming and our study abroad experiences. Our programs range from week long programs like our spring preview to full year long immersion programs where students could be studying at a partner university or at an Arcadia center across the globe. Um, one of the big benefits for our students is that if you study abroad with Arcadia, your costs and financial aid all stay the same. So you could be in Glenside or you could be in London, England or Sydney, Australia, and it's all going to be the same cost um, minus things like airfare or visa fees and passport fees. Um, for the last 10, 10 of the past 12 years, we've actually had one of the highest participation rates in study abroad in the entire United States. In addition to the curriculum you're following on campus, our students have the opportunity to take advantage of internships, field work, and research on opportunities both on campus and around the world through our international programming. And for the class of 2021, just over 90% of our student or almost 95% of our students were employed or pursuing graduate programs related to their majors at Arcadia. And in our admissions process, it's really all about you as a student. Um, all we require of students is your application, your school transcript, which you can upload your own transcript, um, and the letter of recommendation. We are test optional and use a very holistic admissions review. So we're really focused on how have you performed throughout the first year freshman through junior year of high school, um, including looking at what are you completing during your senior year. And as you continue through your search, feel free to contact us. Um, you can scan the QR code here to learn more about Arcadia um, or follow us on any of our social media outlets um, to learn more about what we offer at Arcadia. Thank you so much. Uh, and so next up is St. Vincent College. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brother Xavier, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at St. Vincent College. Beautiful thing about St. Vincent it is a family. We um, strive for getting to know each individual student. And I'm one of the monks at St. Vincent, actually, and I really strive to know every individual student as a person. And that's a really great thing because um, that's the best way to be able to engage in education. So I'm going to share my screen here, and then we're going to go through a small PowerPoint. But so what we want to do here is be able to get familiarized with St. Vincent a little bit. Let's see here. This is an authentic picture of St. Vincent. This is from our 50 acre area of wildflowers and nature trails. This is our Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve. And I'm going to go through a few pictures because the best way to familiarize yourself with St. Vincent is to see some pictures and ultimately visit the campus. And I would recommend that to everybody for whatever college that you are interested in is to visit the campus. And a lot of different schools have travel reimbursement programs. Like St. Vincent, once you're admitted, you are going to be able to have your gas, your food, and one night hotel stay reimbursed. So that's a really great thing. That way your visit to St. Vincent is gonna be free of charge, if not very low cost. So this is another picture of St. Vincent from our Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve. We have a beautiful 200 acre campus lots of green space, lots of nature trails, but we retain the family field class sizes that have an 11 to one student, student teacher ratio. So that means that the class sizes are 25 students and below. Teachers know you by first name after the first couple of weeks. You also get an automatic advisor every single year, regardless of major. Here are some other pictures of St. Vincent. So again, as I said before, lots of green space, lots of nature trails, there's a lot of natural beauty at St. Vincent. And I think that really helps because everybody needs an outlet and everybody needs a place to be able to be themselves. And I think St. Vincent could be that for you as a student. But we are a very good quality institution. Our education, our connections, our career readiness is top notch. We have had many different national rankings. We are very value driven. We only have 1600 students. So you get the great small class sizes. You get internships on demand. That's the beautiful thing about smaller schools is that you have the chance to get to know your advisor, your professors, and that way you can ask for internships. 
not have to compete for them. We also have a dynamic education with 90 total programs, 50 total majors, but 90 total majors and programs that are tailored to each individual student. And the biggest thing about St. Vincent is the combination of everything because the fit is the most important thing. So we have a very high degree of affordability. We will meet 85% of demonstrated need. The average out-of-pocket cost for a Cristo Ray student was about five to six thousand per year. And that does not include work study. So it's a very, very good education, very low cost. Again, I said 11 to 1 student teacher ratio, personalized education, hands-on experiences. We do not have any TAs teaching courses. We only have full professors. So that helps you to be able to familiarize yourself with professionals in the industry. About 90% of all of our faculty do have the highest degree in their field, most likely PhDs in the master's degree for fine arts. That's going to be like art and other things like that, but mostly PhDs. We've been rated as, on US News and World Report. College Factual, we are rated as one of the top 10 best Catholic colleges as well, according to niche.com. And 97% of all of our students in all of our majors have been hired or into grad school. So that's a very, very good testimonial is that we really believe in our students and the teaching and the instruction is very high quality. Also, affordability is very, very important. Everybody who gets admitted to St. Vincent is going to get scholarships. You can start off with a merit-based scholarship and then the 85% demonstrated need will come in. So our scholarships range from 17 to $26,500 a year right off the bat. You're gonna get $3,000 for living on campus, $2,000 for a Catholic high school grant. And then also there's an out-of-state scholarship, but we really believe in our affordability. Like 85% of our demonstrated need means that of the cost of St. Vincent being $53,000, you only pay five to six thousand dollars based upon that's the average, but that's about a forty five, forty seven thousand dollar savings, depending on what your family's income is. If you have a zero EFC, that means you're going to be getting about forty seven thousand dollars off, which is a wonderful value. Also, some of our more known majors in the sciences, we have biology, a lot of pre health professional programs pre-physical therapy, occupational therapy, pharmacy, dentistry, optometry. We have nearly 100% success rate for business, nearly 100% success rate for education, psychology. We have a four-year general engineering degree all done at St. Vincent. We also have an agreement with Pitt, Penn State, or Catholic for a, an engineering program where you get a degree from us and a degree in the specialized type of engineering from Penn State. Penn State is actually 40% of all the engineering uh, people in the United States come from Penn State. We also have a $45 million science facility, brand new labs, brand new lecture halls, a human anatomy lab is on site, a digital imaging lab is also on site. We also have a nurse simulation lab, fantastic nursing major. We also have 24 varsity sports for both men and women. We also offer 50 different clubs and organizations. We also just broke ground in a brand new arena. So if you are a college bound athlete, be assured of your skills, get in contact with our coaches and then fill out a recruiting questionnaire. The admission process, I'm gonna to jump to immediately. The admission process is very simple. We only require application, free on our website, common app, just transcripts and an ACT score, that's my alarm. And once everything comes in, then you're gonna be able to get a decision electronically within two weeks and then we also do have that travel reimbursement program where you'd be able to have your travel, gas, food, and one-night hotel room to be reimbursed. So St. Vincent really sets itself apart with the personalization of our education, our affordability, and our really quality high degree programs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next up is the University of Scranton. 
Awesome. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jill. Very excited to be here with you all tonight. Let me pull up my screen here. So I am an admissions counselor at the University of Scranton, and I'm also a proud Scranton alum, graduated there in 2019, and absolutely loved every second of it. So I'm happy to share a little bit about it with you today. Um, starting off, we are a proud Catholic and Jesuit university, so that is certainly a huge part of our identity. It really does play a big role in who we are and what we do on a daily basis also in what we offer both inside and outside of the classroom, but it does not mean that anybody has to be Catholic or Christian to come to Scranton or, or to participate in um, many of the events that we offer. It will, like I said, though, play a role if you would like it to. Moving on to take a look at Scranton by the numbers, we are a smaller to medium sized school, so we have about 3500 undergrad students, I think it's that perfect size where no matter where you go on campus you're going to see somebody you know you're going to run into a familiar face, see a friend see somebody who lives on your floor with you, and yet you're constantly going to meet new people as well so it never feels too small you don't feel like you're only seeing the same couple of faces over and over again. Uh, in the classroom we definitely like to keep things on the smaller side so our average class size is 20 students. Students, and classes are capped off at 35 students. So you're never going to be sitting in huge lecture halls where professors don't know you or anything like that. Uh, you really get to know your classmates, really get to know your professors. They get to know you, which is going to make a huge difference in your academic experience when you actually have people who you can connect with, who you can go to for help, who you can turn to for letters of recommendation and different things like that. So you'll absolutely reap the benefits of having those smaller class sizes and those more personal relationships. Speaking of classes and the many different things that you can study at Scranton, we really encourage our students to pursue their passion. So whether you have a pretty good idea of what you want to study or you're still not quite sure, that is totally fine because we want to help you figure it out while you're here. So at Scranton, we do have 69 majors as well as 49 minors pretty much anything that you could think of. And we, like I said, encourage you to study what you want to study. So you'll be able to explore different areas. It's very easy to double major if you wanted to. Um, I actually know some students who triple majored. So you'll really be able to do a little bit of everything while you're here. Um, if you're kind of looking to push yourself academically, you'll absolutely be able to do that as well. We do have five great honors programs that students can join. We have some great pre-health and pre-law advisory programs if you're thinking about continuing your education that way. Uh, we also have 34 graduate programs and then a good number of accelerated graduate programs as well right on campus if you're thinking about continuing your education. And last but not least, we have some great faculty-led research programs. So research is highly encouraged for all of our students, not just our science students. And you're able to get started with hands-on research as early as your first semester on campus, which is exciting. Talking a little bit more about our Catholic and Jesuit identity, uh, a big part of you know, what we offer is our Division of Mission and Ministry, which houses both our campus ministries office as well as our Center for Service and, so Service and Social Justice. Um, so these two offices really kind of work together to help guide our students through their faith journeys, whatever those journeys may be. So we have everything from daily and Sunday masses to a retreat house to interfaith resources available on campus. And then service is certainly a huge part of who we are at Scranton. So if you're interested in doing service, you will absolutely be able to do so, whether you're looking to do it locally, nationally or internationally, we have options for each. Other ways that you can get involved on campus are plentiful. Um, one of my favorite things about being a Scranton student was just all of the ways that there were to get involved, all of the things that there were to do. So currently we have over 80 clubs and organizations, uh, over 900 events happen on campus every school year. So no matter what time of the week it is, no matter what time of the day it is, there is always going to be something going on that you can attend or participate in. Uh, we also have about 23 men's and women's division three sports on campus and roughly 25 club and intramural sports. So lots of ways to get active, get out there, meet new people and try fun things. Now, if you're thinking about or wondering where we are located, um, we are in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So you can see roughly where we are in comparison to New York, Philly, DC, things like that. But Scranton itself is a city. It's generally a smaller city, but it still has everything that you could want or need. Um, when you're on our campus, though, you do feel like you're on an, an enclosed college campus. So you, you tr do get that true campus feel, but then you can easily walk into the downtown area and find anything you need. 
need. Um, we're also in the greater Pocono Mountain region of Pennsylvania. So if you're into hiking, skiing, snowboarding, anything like that, you're going to have lots of options for that, which is great. Uh, I personally loved having that nature and city balance because I think no matter what you're looking for, you'll be able to find it in the nearby area. When it comes to the application, uh, I like to say we are really as easy as it gets for applications. Uh, we are on the Common App. It's the only thing you have to submit, and it is free right off the bat, which is nice. You can also see some of our stats on there. And then when it comes to scholarship and aid um, and cost in general, you can see some of our stats here. Um, we are a partner school with the Cristo Ray Network, so uh, qualified students um, will qualify for up to 80% uh, of their tuition off. So we will meet that and really try to make it as affordable as possible for you. So thank you so much for uh, coming out today. This slide here just has some scholarship and additional aid information. Um, but thank you so much for coming today. And I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you very much. And up next, we will hear from the University of Dayton. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Shira Thomas. I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Recruitment and Admission at the University. I'm also an alum, so feel free to pick my brain if you should have, if you should have any questions at all. Um, I can tell you a lot about UD and just all the great things and fun stuff to do. But just to um, jump into things, just because I wanna be conscientious of our time and make sure that you guys have plenty of time to ask us questions at the end. I'm gonna give you some background information about the University of Dayton. So we are a mid-sized university. We have about 8,600 undergraduate students, a little over 12,000 if you count our professional students and doctorate students, et cetera. So mid-size just means that we offer you the best of both worlds. We're gonna offer the same opportunities that you would get at a larger school when it comes to your division one sports and intramurals and activities, um, study abroad, state-of-the-art facilities, spaciousness, all the big school things, division one sports. We've got all that. But we also have the small town feel, which I really love. We have smaller class sizes with about 26 students in the average class. That means you really get to know your professors and they get to know you and you get to know your peers. You get to build those lasting friendships. This is an opportunity for you to learn inside the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. We have about 46% of our students coming from out of state. So you will not be the only student that's from out of state. You're gonna find your niche. You're gonna find the people there that are there to support you and love on you and help you to become the best version of yourself. At UD, because we are a Catholic and Marian University, we believe in developing students as whole persons. So that's the mind, the body, and the spirit. We wanna make sure that you're really figuring out what your vocation is or what we like to call your calling. We help you to decide and figure out what are your natural talents and skills and gifts and how that translates over into a career, right? Something that you really love doing, um, something that you're able to share with the world because each of you has a gift that is meant to be shared with the world. So at UD, we help to cultivate that in a lot of different ways, whether it's in the classroom with your academics or perhaps it's in the organizations that you join. We have over 260 different ways in which you can become active with campus. Um, whether like that's an intramural or that could be joining an organization like I did or maybe a few organizations like I did. <laughs> there's lots of ways that you can kind of get involved. Um, there's also service opportunities. We have one of the largest campus ministries in the nation. Um, I did my study abroad opportunity through campus ministry and it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So if you are interested in studying abroad, UD is a great opportunity and great place to help nurture that side as well. Now to kind of move on a little bit, uh, we have over 80 academic programs that are broken into four different divisions. Again, I mentioned earlier how we have smaller class sizes with 26 students in the average class. We also have a very tight knit community. I think part of that sense of community, that sense of belonging stems from the fact that we have a very unique living um, situation for students where you start out in a dorm, but by the time you graduate, you're in the houses or the apartments. And about 80% of our students live on campus all four years. So they really get to build those friendships and really get to apply what they're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom in a meaningful way as well. We also have a 15 to one um, student to faculty ratio. So again, you really are being taught by the professor. They know you, which is really helpful when you need a recommendation. Just wanna put that out there as well. Um, I have some really great relationships with some of my professors even to this day. Some other things to kind of think about um, when you're looking at the University of Dayton, we have a really high success rate. Six months after graduation, our students are hitting the ground running. We have a 97% success rate that they're hitting the ground running six months after graduation, but also that they're in their chosen field as a full-time employee. So our students are getting a really good return on this investment of college. 
In addition, we have a lot of resources to help our students holistically. So our MEC Center, which is our multi-ethnic education and engagement center, is really there to help students navigate the University of Dayton to really help them find that warmth of welcome, that sense of belonging. They're very, very supportive um, for, for all of our students and really helping to educate all of our community. Um, we also have our, our campus ministry, like I mentioned earlier before, and we have our health and well-being program. So this is a great opportunity for you to get the support you need, whether that's mentally, physically, and or spiritually. So lots of wraparound services here at the university. Now, really quickly, I'm going to transition a bit over to how do you apply to UD. It's very easy, I would say, and simple for us. Um, we're on the Common App. We also have the UD application, and it's a free application, so you don't have to worry about paying anything um, for the application. What is required is your essay and your transcript, and everything else is optional. So whatever you feel helps to demonstrate you know, your awesomeness or the things that you want us to really know, that's what you can submit. And we'll review it because we believe in a holistic review. When it comes to test scores, we are test optional. We truly are test optional for admission and for scholarships because we only have one application for admission and scholarships. So please try to apply to all of the universities if you can before November 1st. That is gonna really help you. So it's one less thing you have to worry about and you'll truly be thankful for Thanksgiving all your college stuff this time. <laughs> Besides that, um, the timeline of events, how you'll find out the next steps, you're um, applying by November 1st, you'll find out in December if you've been admitted, and then in January, you get your academic award, and then at UD, we send out a four-year financial aid package. So come February, you'll have all the information that you, you and your family will need in order to make the best choices for you. So please make sure that you also file your FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. That's really important. Um, and with that, I will let my next um, colleague present and introduce you to their school, but thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I'll put my contact information in the chat and I'd love to connect with you soon. Have a great night. Thanks very much. Uh, up next, we will hear from Case Western Reserve University. All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Gabby Valentine. I am an admission counselor at Case Western Reserve University. Oop, I think I'm sharing the wrong slides with you. <laughs> Give me one second here. I thought I was so technologically advanced. Uh, okay, let's try this. Oh, can you all see it? Okay. So um, Case Western Reserve University is located in Cleveland, Ohio. We are a mid-sized uh, institution. We are a private research institution. And what's really great about us is that we are an all-encompassing university that has over a hundred different majors and minors. Um, and you're able to explore all of this. We have a single door admission policy. That means that our students, when they apply to the university are not just applying to their major or um, you know, the department where their major lives, they're applying to the university as a whole. So if you're the kind of student who um, has an idea and you just need the resources to get there, we're the kind of place for you. But if you're the kind of student who has a lot of different interests and you're not quite sure you're ready to give one of them up, we're also the place for you too. Um, our students find that they're able to pursue all of their interests, which I think is a really wonderful component of the Case Western Reserve experience. And I think one of the things that really helps us stand out as well is that we are an R1 research institution. We have an undergraduate population of only about 6,000. So that means that access to opportunities are abundant. Um, we are in the top 20 for universities with federal funding for grant research. Uh, and we also have 99% of our students learning by doing in some sort of hands-on capacity. In fact, we have more students on our campus doing research than not doing research. About 86% of our students are doing some form of research across all kinds of different majors. So whether you want to get into a lab or you want to do political science research with one of our faculty or get into one of the many museums, which we'll talk about in just a minute, you're going to be able to do that because we have the supports in place to help you do that. And we are really a place that believes in taking what you're learning in the classroom and applying it directly to the real world um, as soon as possible. A great example of this is the guy you see here on the slide, Chris Carr, who actually got to do field research in Arizona with a faculty member and helped to discover a, uh, a galaxy, which allowed him to be in conversations with great minds like Neil deGrasse Tyson. So um, our students are doing incredible things every single day. 
the way that our students are doing those things looks a little different depending on what you're interested in. Service learning is a huge component. Our students are getting out into the Cleveland area and helping to make our community a better place. Like I said, they're researching in all kinds of different fields. We also have a top five nursing institution in the country. And so our nursing students are actually participating in their clinicals within three weeks of getting on campus uh, in their first year, meaning that they're gonna amass over 1300 hours of clinical experience by the time they graduate. We also are a place for innovators and thinkers. Um, so we have about half a dozen startups that leave from our university every single year, utilizing spaces like Thinkbox. Uh, if you're interested in engineering, about a third of our students will do co-ops, which are those full-time paid internships. Uh, and about half of the students who do co-ops are going to leave with some sort of job offer. Uh, and then we also have a lot of different opportunities to allow our students to get internship opportunities, work opportunities, job shadowing, volunteering, you name it. And we have a number of offices to support them. So whether you're going through our, our co-op office, our office for the support of undergraduate research and creative endeavors, our Baker Nord Center for the Humanities, or our Office of Postgraduate Planning, you're going to be able to find the resources, whether that's through professional development, or funding for that unpaid internship that you need to help you take it to one step further uh, in your professional career. And then about a third of our students do study abroad. And uh, like some of our other institutions that are here today, we're the kind of place where whatever you're paying to be on campus is whatever you're gonna pay to go abroad. And what's really great about that is we are also an institution that meets 100% of demonstrated financial need. So whatever uh, shows up at the end of your EFC, your estimated family contribution on the FAFSA and the CSS profile, is what you're going to pay because we believe that it's important to make uh, a college education affordable. Uh, and so if that EFC number is zero, then you're going to be paying zero. Uh, and so our students are able to uh, get a really phenomenal education at a price point that meets the needs that they and their family have. And all of these amazing things that we offer also come with really strong support. Our students get not only faculty advisors, they also get professional staff navigators who are there to help them with those personal and professional development components. We do have a two-year housing requirement and about 80% of our students are living on campus at any given time. And so those residential life coordinators and directors are gonna be really important to that experience as our library advisors who are gonna help support your research. We have the largest open access makerspace at any university in the country. It is seven stories, it's 50,000 square feet, and it is uh, free to use for any student. In fact, you don't even have to be a student of the university to utilize Thinkbox because it's also a community space. So those innovators and those entrepreneurs, those thinkers and those creative minds, they're utilizing some of the best materials out there uh, to be able to take what's in their head and make it a reality uh, on campus. And then we also give them the opportunity to get those ideas patented as well as build the business model around it too. And we know that you might want to get involved in campus and that's awesome because we have a lot to get involved with. We have a brand new performing arts center. Uh, we are a division three institution so our students aren't getting scholarship for participating in athletics but we are participating in one of the most competitive uh, division three conferences in the nation. And then our students are also doing a lot of incredible community service like I talked about earlier, as well as getting involved in club, intramural sports, Greek life, and multicultural organizations. And then you add our city to the mix, and that's one of the best parts. We are located in Cleveland, Ohio. 70% of all Fortune 500 companies have some sort of regional presence here, which means there's plenty of opportunities for internships, networking, jobs after graduation, uh, and fun to do too. So if you're looking for a place where you can have a real college experience, as well as get out into the city, uh, you're going to find your place here at Case Western Reserve and in Cleveland as well. And that's a little bit about my spiel. Please make sure that you are checking out uh, our website and signing up for some of our other virtual opportunities. Awesome, thank you. And our final presenter of the evening is University of Southern California. Hey, th thanks, Matt. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time out of your evening to learn more about colleges and USC um, as well. I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. I'm not the most tech savvy person in the world. So uh, let's see what happens here. Uh, ho hopefully uh, y'all can see that. Uh, so my name is Andy. My pronouns are he and his. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at USC. I was a first gen college student, um, low income as well, and uh, an immigrant myself. So. Uh, doing things like this is really cool for me because I wish I, there was someone there uh, for me when I was um, looking uh, to apply to colleges. So here, what you see on the screen now 
is just one of the many green spaces on campus. This is our alumni park. It will really bookend your time at USC. So it'll be the first place you're at for student convocation, right? This big welcome ceremony we have uh, to welcome the students into the Trojan family, but it'll also be the last place you're at for, uh, for graduation as well. So if you're not too familiar with USC, we're located just about a mile and a half from downtown Los Angeles. Uh, it's a fairly big campus. And I know when you think downtown Los Angeles, thinking probably a more compact campus, but it takes me like 15 minutes to get from one end of campus to the other end. And I'm a very slow walker. So if you're bringing a board or bring a bike, we have a bunch of these e-scooters on campus. You're gonna find no problems getting from one end of campus to the other end. And I think honestly, in part, that's uh, in part thanks to the lack of hills. It's like a fairly flat campus. Uh, but as you can see, we're a pretty big, large private research university, right? About 49,500 students total, not the best of math, but I think from that 28,500 of them are graduate students, right? Um, graduate students are not campus all the time. I myself am a graduate student. I'm not on campus all the time. A lot of them are virtual uh, online students, so they're never on campus. So you'll never be on campus with like 49,499 other folks. I think that's just way too many people and that would potentially be overwhelming, honestly. Uh, but while we are big, bigger, larger university, I personally don't believe we're impersonal by any means. And if you take a look at the student faculty ratio, it's eight to one, right? So that means your professors are gonna know each and every one of you as more than just a name on a roster sheet. And that's important, right? If you're thinking about going to grad school, law school, med school, whatever the case may be, you want a professor who knows you really well because they're going to write you that letter of recommendation. And of course, if you're looking for a job after you graduate, not only uh, can they write you a letter of recommendation, but they can also serve as a reference for you. And in addition to that, your average class size is around 25, 26. So you're not going to be sitting in bigger lecture halls or 400, 500 students. I have like ADHD. I cannot sit in a lecture hall that big. Uh, so I'll sit in the back and inevitably I'll end up watching Netflix with that guy in front of me. But uh, you're not going to have that experience at USC. You're going to really get to know your colleagues, right, other students, your peers. Uh, but I think more importantly, you're going to also know your professors really well and vice versa. So now that you have a little bit of the classroom uh, experience and insight into that, you may be thinking what's your overall experience going to look like. I really want to talk about interdisciplinary studies first. That's just a fancy term, y'all, for combining two or more academic disciplines into like a single degree path, or whether that means you're double majoring or adding a minor. Uh, you can do that at USC. We have over 150 majors and 200 minors. Again, not the best at math, so I'm uncertain how many uh, combinations, permutations that makes, but our students have great flexibility. So we don't pigeonhole you and say, okay, you can only come and study business or you can only come and study engineering, right? I think the more common double majors for business is philosophy, neuroscience, and biological sciences. Whereas the most popular minor for our engineering students is theater. Now, I don't know anything about engineering and I definitely know nothing about theater, but I don't think the two have a lot in common with one another. So hopefully that provides you with some insight into the students at USC. We want you to have flexibility autonomy, right, agency, but I think most importantly, we want you to have creativity when it comes to how you want your academics uh, to look like. But in addition to that, we also want you to be able to translate what you're learning in class into something more tangible, right, and that's research specifically. Research at USC is, is uh, conducted in every single field of study, whether it is STEM, uh, film, business, political science, communication, right, and uh, USC, you can you can conduct research in your very first year uh, if you like, and if you don't compete with graduate students, know your own professors to conduct research, and it takes place year round. So we have funding to provide you uh, with in order to be a research assistant or go ahead and conduct your own original independent idea as well. We also have the global perspective. This is infused in your USC experience, right? So not only are we top two or three when it comes to our international student population, but also you get that uh, experience off campus, right? In about any given semester, there's about 2000 students studying abroad, doing so in more than 50 cities on five different continents. Uh, I think the only place we haven't been to yet is Antarctica. Uh, so if you're looking to go there, I'm sorry about that. Although I'm sure the traffic's a little bit better than LA itself, but you can study abroad as a business student your first year, but most students will select to uh, study abroad during that first summer between their uh, first year of college and their second year of college. And every single department at USC has their own overseas, overseas studies program as well. But outside of the opportunities abroad, lots of things to do closer to campus. As I mentioned, we're very close to downtown Los Angeles. As you can see here, this is the Santa Monica Pier. It's quite popular for our students during midterms and finals week. What they'll do is grab a textbook, a laptop, notebook, whatever they're studying out of, hop on a metro uh, for about 30, 35 minutes, and I should mention they bring a beach towel because they either sit on the pier overlooking the water studying or sit on the sand by the water and study. And I think they do a great job of intertwining the academics with the surrounding community. Uh, because when you're in an environment that's more calming, soothing, and relaxing, I think you just inherently absorb the material that much better versus being perhaps cooped up in a library, cooped up in a dorm room, right? That can be potentially a lot more anxiety inducing. So 
Um, the students do a great job of uh, intertwining both of them, in my estimation. And honestly, there's if you can't find something in Los Angeles, uh, it probably doesn't exist anywhere else, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but campus life, you know, I think the one thing I want to talk about campus life is really the fact that we have 1,097 clubs, and this time last year, we had 1,000 clubs. So in just a year, the students that started at USC, they uh, brought 97 clubs with them, or, or made 97 clubs. And what that represents for me is the fact that we just want you to come to USC as yourself, and with that, bring your unique interests, bring your unique characteristics. We don't want you to conform to some pre-established activity or behavior. Because uh, if that was the case, we only have like five clubs or six clubs. Um, but when a student doesn't find a club that resonates with them, they just find some friends and create the club. Um, so that's why we keep adding more and more clubs each year. And of course, the Trojan family. I know uh, <laughs> lots of colleges are going to talk about their alumni network. For us, we call it a family, right? And we don't use that term lightly nor loosely. It, it's a commitment to you, yes, the student, but also to uh, your success beyond your four years here at USC. So apply. Uh, Application process holistic, meaning not one single component of your application is the end all be all. You want to definitely apply by November 1. That's our early action deadline because you'll be automatically considered for free money if you do that. And uh, utilize the Common App to do so. And I just want to touch upon the third bullet point here is the College Affordability Initiative. If you're admitted to USC, you emanate from a family making $80,000 or less, uh, you will attend USC tuition free. So that's just more of the expanding upon access that we're really big about here at USC. But thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a great evening. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Um, so we have a few minutes left in this session. I would invite all of our presenters to come back on camera. And we have time for uh, one or two round robin questions. The first question is, um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our presenters to respond in the same order that they presented. Uh, so we'll go back to Arcadia University. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So I always tell students one of the most important things as you're going through the college search process is ask questions. Don't be afraid of the admissions officers. Um, we might be the people that are behind, you know, the curtain making the decisions, but we're here to help you, really. That's why most of us are going to be in these roles um, to help you figure out what is going to be the best type of institution for you and get you the information that you need. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to the admissions officers at the schools you're applying to. That's a good point. And also, I would say that uh, go to a school that fits you as a person. If you are a smaller group person, then go to a smaller school where you can be a small fish in a small pond, I mean, a big fish in a small pond, and you can uh, be yourself. Don't go to a place where you find the best program ever, but you are being restricted. Be yourself and find the program that fits you best. Awesome. I think my colleagues made really great points. Definitely, uh, you know, second both of those. Um, some advice I would have is to try to visit the schools that you're interested in, if not in person, at least virtually. Um, pretty much every school now has great virtual options, but I think, you know, there's nothing that really um, can substitute an in-person visit. So if it's doable, definitely try to get to campus if you're able to at some point throughout your college search. Take them next. Yes, I agree with everything that everyone has said as well, especially um, to come and visit. I think it's really important to do that. Um, some schools like us, we even give you a $4,000 textbook scholarship if you visit and file your FAFSA. So my two cents would be deadlines. Please make sure you don't meet, don't miss your deadlines. Apply sooner versus later so that you truly are thankful for Thanksgiving. I meant that. Get all the college stuff done before November 1st. And then also make sure that you get your FAFSA done because that is so important to fill out that free application for federal student aid. You wanna make sure that you're maximizing your scholarship opportunity. Yeah, I um, wanna echo all of that. And then my other two pieces of advice are think about the kind you wanna become and look for universities that are producing people like that. Um, I think that that's a really great advice that I see our students are doing some really incredible things. Um, and I know that there are alumni at all kinds of institutions who are doing amazing things. Um, think about who you want to be for, you know, four years down the line, 20 years down the line and look for places that are producing that kind of person. Um, but also apply. 
uh, you know, sometimes the, the admission uh, percentages can feel scary. Sometimes the cost can feel scary. Um, but the worst we can say is no, and you don't want to limit yourself before you get started. Yeah, um, also, I just want to echo what all my colleagues have said. Um, that's really important. And, and to leverage off that as well, I think, um, you know, it's just really focus on yourself, right, and your mental health and, and you know, remembering that uh, you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else that's applying to any of these other great colleges, right? I, I know that we don't really stick to students and compare them to one another and say, who's better, right? And, and just understand that it's um, whatever the outcome is, it's never a personal um, decision, right? Um, and, and we understand that you're going to do great things no matter which uh, college you, you ultimately decide to go to. But uh, definitely focus on your mental health and focus on being a senior as well. Excellent. Well, that brings us to the end of this session. Uh, big thank you to all of our presenters for your time this evening. Uh, thank you to our audience for joining us. When you close the Zoom window, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. Uh, and don't forget, there are more sessions happening as part of this college fair uh, on Saturday. And you'll be able to find a recording of this session and others uh, at strivescan.com backslash Christo-Ray. Uh, so thank you all and have a great rest of your night.